Okay, whenever? Okay. Hi there, I'm Weston Testo. I'm an undergraduate at Colgate University in Hamilton, New York, in the biology department there. I work in Eddie Watkins' lab on kind of some gametophyte physiology and ecology. Uh, this poster is the developmental ecology of the American heart's tongue fern, Phyletus scolopendrium variety Americana. And uh, I'm working with Eddie Watkins on this project. Uh, and I'm excited to tell you about some of the ecology work of, uh, that I've been doing on Phyllitis scolopendrium. Uh, the American heart's tongue fern is a rare fern found in sheltered uh, ravines and hardwood forests in New York, Michigan, and Ontario, as well as in lime sinks near the mouths of caves in Tennessee and Alabama. Uh, three additional populations have been reported in three states in Mexico, but nothing's really known about the ferns down there, so I'm just going to focus on the plants in Ontario and uh, the United States. Over the past uh, century, there's been extensive sporophyte censuses conducted on this plant, so we have a good idea how many plants have been out there since 1922. Uh, in the 1990s, there was a significant crash in the populations of uh, the American heart's tongue fern in central New York, which is kind of the center of diversity for this plant. Ninety percent of the plants in the United States are found in central New York. So I went out to try and uh, see if I could explain some of this, uh, this big crash. Fifty percent of the plants in New York have died over the course of the, the last 20 years. So I set out to look up the gametophyte ecology a little bit to see if that could explain some things since all the work that's been done with this plant has been with the sporophyte generation. Uh, in particular, I focused on two aspects that I feel might severely impact the development of the American heart stung fern, temperature and calcium availability, as this fern's found in these sheltered places with buffered temperatures year round and also on really calcium rich slopes. I grew ferns at 20 and 25 degrees Celsius and in three calcium treatments, uh, low, medium, and high. The high calcium 20 degree treatment most closely resembles the natural heart's tongue fern habitat. In addition, I grew two species that are found in the same kind of habitat, uh, Splenium rhizophyllum, the walking fern, and silvery glade fern, Diperia acrosticoides. They were for comparative purposes. Uh, to see uh, mostly ecology work in terms of growth rate, but also some physiology. Uh, I characterized the developmental patterns of the fern over a two-month period in the early developmental stage, and also uh, kind of judged the growth rates of all three species over a longer term. Uh, here's the growth rate and developmental patterns of the American heart's tongue fern. Uh, grows much slower than the other two species which I dealt with and also produce sporophytes at a much later time. It took 20 weeks for the heart's tongue fern to produce their first sporophytes whereas Diperia acrosticoides did so in 12 weeks and Asplenium rhizophyllum took 14 weeks to produce sporophytes. The effects of temperature and calcium were actually very significant. Uh, the ferns that I grew at 25 degrees Celsius did not develop to maturity. They stopped at about a, a 12 to 20 stage, or 20 cell stage uh, of development and remained there for months on end. Uh, calcium seemed to affect the sexual maturity of uh, the gametophytes that I grew. Those grown at high calcium became sexually mature earlier and only the plants that were grown at the high calcium treatment produced sporophytes. Those in the low and medium uh, calcium treatments continued in a uh, gametophyte stage and appear that they're never going to produce sporophytes. As these gametophytes developed, I isolated a small subset before they reached sexual maturity and grew them in, in isolation to see the ability of this plant to self-fertilize, which is fairly common in some species of fern. It appears that the heart's tongue fern gametophytes are completely incapable of self-fertilization. There was one sporophyte produced by apogamy, which is uh, a gametophyte produces a sporophyte without fertilization. It's kind of an unusual situation. But they do asexually reproduce, which is extremely unusual and uh, might be indicative of this kind of reduced life cycle 
on the part of the American heartstone fern, given that it's reduced to these very limited habitats in an Apache distribution across the United States. So they, they grow a small hair off the side of the gametophyte that broadens over time into a, a 30 or 40 cell long outgrowth that broadens and then that develops into a whole new gametophyte which is still attached to the parent gametophyte and then that plant breaks off and continues to develop on its own. Over a 10 week period of isolation, 20% uh, of the gametophytes in isolation produced multiple new gametophytes and over 40% produce, to some extent, these asexual outgrowths. I did some physiological work on the desiccation tolerance of the gametophyte, which I found to be important, given that these habitats um, have been opened up in recent years for uh, development of trails and whatnot, which is going to decrease the humidity in these sites. I compared it to a splenium rhizophyllum, which work in the early 20th century is shown to be desiccation tolerant. Uh, my work confirmed that Asplenium rhizophyllum is extremely desiccation tolerant, while Phyllitis scolopendrum is not, which kind of suggests that it may be less capable than some other species to cope with drying habitats. I've got a lot more work to do with this. I, I'm an undergrad. I got two more years at Colgate University to work in. I'm going to do some kind of more comparative work with the sporophyte generation, um, interspecific gametophyte competition to see if there's any kind of hormonal competition between these species. And I also want to do some phylogenetic molecular work to better understand the strange distribution of the American hardstung fern, uh, which also has a, a variety in Europe, the European hardstung fern, to understand how this fern came up with this crazy distribution that it has and how distinct each of these populations are uh, in genetics terms. Uh, that's pretty much all I've got for you today. Thank you very much for your time.